So for chapter five, we finally get to start physics. Five chapters into it. We weren't in physics before. By physics, I mean Newtonian physics. So up until now, everything has been stuff that people figured out before Newton got here. Everything after this, though, this is all the Newton stuff. And really, Newton started physics. And there's, he's got three laws. This is, and you all need to know these three laws, okay? Do you know them already? Uh, law of inertia. Oh, yep, yep, yep. That. Law number one. Objects in law of inertia. An object in motion tends to stay in motion unless acted on by an equal or greater force. Objects in motion stays in motion unless acted upon by an outside force. Or an object at rest tends to stay at rest unless acted upon by an outside force. What does this mean? It just means that that pen will sit there unless an outside force acts on it, in which case it will move. Okay? Does that make sense? Uh, it, but it's also true in motion. Now, Ready for this? An object in motion will stay in motion unless acted on. So, what does in motion mean? Moving. Moving. So, let me steal my calculator and I'm going to put it in motion. You ready? Why isn't it still in motion? Friction. There was an outside force. What was that outside force? Friction. Okay, we'll talk about friction later. Today, actually. That's a Greek letter, I'm assuming. Yeah, yeah, this is the Greek letter sigma, and that, that's a sloppy sigma. A good one would look like this. That's a sloppy sigma. That's a capital sigma. The lowercase sigma is this one. Okay. Uh, so let's see here. We know two Greek letters. Yeah, you've got theta, now you've got sigma, right? Well, actually, I think. Oh yeah, you get a delta. Well, you, you get a whole Greek vocabulary. Okay, That's, this is rule number two. The whole rule is the language of math. Actually, the way he said it was, well, in la in words you can say like this. You can say it this way. A um, mass will be accelerated if there is a net force on it. Speed change. Yeah. Remember, acceleration is changing speed over time. So if speed no doesn't change, what's its acceleration? None. It doesn't if its acceleration is zero, if acceleration is zero, what is the net force on that pen? 
has to be. There is no net pull. Wait a second. I thought we were on planet Earth and gravity's pulling it down. Why doesn't that silly pen go down? Because it's stopped by the table. There's a table in the way. And the table is pushing it up with an equal and opposite force. That force is called the normal force. We're going to learn about that today, too. Okay, so there you go. I'll follow in this. Okay, law number three. This one, your book's not going to tell it to you this way, but it should. Okay? You ready for this one? Here's how this goes. I'm going to pick on Jones for this one. I shouldn't have used your pen for the pen example because this one requires me to hit somebody and I'm not going to hit you. Okay, so, you ready, Jonas? Yeah. I'm going to hit your shoulder. Okay, you ready? Yeah. I hit Jonas's shoulder. Okay? Identify the nouns of that sentence. I know this is English. Shoulder. Identify nouns. That's one of them. I. I is the other one, right? I hit Jonas's shoulder. Okay, identify the nouns and flip flop. Shoulder hit I. <laughs> shoulder hit I. That's what this law is, okay? For every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. If my fist hits your shoulder that way, then your shoulder hits my fist this way. So, for every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. We can do the table. My fist hit the table down. Because of the third law, the table hit my fist up. Actually, the third law doesn't, it's not because of the third law. It's, third, the law it's, it's, it's this way because God made it this way. The third law just describes it. Okay? Notice, this is, this is a trick. Okay? Not everything that is equal and opposite is a third law pair. Only if you can do the noun flipping thing is it a third law pair. So, like this one. What are the forces on that pen right now? Gravity. Gravity's pulling it down, and? Table's pushing it up. Table's pushing it up. Those are not third law pairs. Did you catch that? Gravity pushed pen down. What pushed the pen up? The table. The table. Is that the gravity? No. No. Okay. 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 It's got to be, if you can flip flop, if you can flip flop nouns, it's a third law pair. Does that make sense? Yeah. Your book won't explain it to you. That's, that's the best explanation, explanation I've ever heard for that. Okay. We're going to talk a lot more about all this. We can spend, well, I teach a class called Advanced Mechanics and we spend a whole semester. Actually, this is great. I love this. I spend a whole semester with this one in the special case when a whole semester right here. And then a second semester there. What does mechanics mean? What does that mean exactly? Like mechanics so the, this one was advanced mechanics, this one's statics. Uh, so mechanics is mechanical operations. Have they, have they so like flat machines or things like that? Mm, it, it could be applied to machines, but it's more so, yeah, we can talk about this all day, but we're not going to. We're going to move right along to friction. Okay? First thing you need to know, and I alluded to this on the first day, but I didn't tell it to you explicitly. Okay? The force of gravity, okay? So this is F, stands for force. G stands for gravity. So this is the force of gravity. What's the underlying mean? It's a vector. It's a vector. It has a direction. Which way is the force of gravity going to go? Every single time it goes down. Why? Because 
it's attracted to the center of the earth to a large body, so it's kind of here. Because gravity goes down. <laughs> okay? So here's what this is. The equation for this, this is a shortcut equation. You're going to learn the long cut of this equation in a few chapters. Okay? But here's the shortcut version. This only works on the surface of the earth within 100 miles or so. Okay? You can oh, okay. I remember this. Okay. This is mass, the mass of your object, times the acceleration rate of Earth, which is 9.8 or 32. Okay, so what does this mean? I think you've seen this one before, haven't you? Have we talked about this equation? Okay. The force of gravity is the mass of the object times the acceleration of the planet. So here's what this means. Anything that has mass, gravity acts on it, pulls it down. This much force. With that said, this is equivalent to weight. If your book says something weighs this, in your mind you go ding. Force of gravity is this. Weight, force of gravity, same word. So that why there's a non-exact parallel between uh, mid metric system and uh, exactly. This is why uh, mass, which is measured in kilograms, is not the same thing as weight measured in pounds. They're not equivalent. You can't go from mass to weight. Now, if you multiply it times the acceleration rate of Earth on Earth, then you can go there. And so those those dumbbells when you go to the gym. And, uh, oh, we're spending time in the gym. If you go to the gym, there's a big iron plate. It's about this big around. And on one side it says 45 pounds. On the other side it says 22 and a half kilos. As if those two are the same thing. And I'm telling you it's wrong. Because 22 and a half kilos is a mass. 45 pounds is a weight. They are not equivalent. If you take that dumbbell with that iron plate, the moon would not be the same. It'd still be 22 and a half kilos, but it, but it would not be 45 pounds anymore. But it's true as long as you stay on So there is an exact conversion, basically putting them right next to each other and saying, this is how many pounds it is, and this is how many kilograms it is. Right. You're not, it's not legal to go from one to the other. But we do. However, people do it all the time because we never really leave planet Earth. Next thing we need to talk about normal force. Um, I've already alluded to this a little bit. Let's say this book weighs five pounds. There was a key word there. Did you catch it? It weighs. It weighs. What does that tell you? Um, how much is gravity? Exactly. The force of gravity of this book is five pounds. Which weighs it? Just identify the vector. You now know the amount, five pounds, and the direction, down. Okay? But that so says how many degrees? That would be basically um, 270 degrees straight down. Oh. Yep. So you can basically figure all stuff out. Absolutely. Okay? Now, with this said, why does the book go down? You've already told me once. Table's in the way, and so the table's pushing it up. How hard is the table pushing it up? It is indeed pushing it up with five pounds. It would be 9.81. Oh, that's acceleration. That's acceleration, it's not a force. How do I know it's pushing it up with five pounds? It's not accelerating. And if acceleration is zero, then the net force is also zero. That means negative 5 plus positive 5 add up to 0. Okay, this is how the normal force works. It says, there's my... So, just hypothetically, if for some reason gravity was to go down so that uh, the weight would only be 4 pounds, yes. the book isn't going to float off because the oh. table is going to compensate and change to this reacting. This is the beauty of the normal force. The normal force only pushes as hard as it has to, and only up to a limit. 
Sounds like a union worker. <laughs> it's exactly like a union worker. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> okay. It. So, so watch this. Um, I'm gonna steal your book. You ready? You're on page 141. Okay. How much does this book weigh? Five pounds. Watch this. There's five pounds here going down, and five pounds here going down. How much weight is pulling down? Ten. What's the normal force? Just as much, no more, no less. Ten. Did you see that? The normal force changed. So the normal force automatically adjusts itself all the time. But there's a limit. What is the limit? As much as the table can hold. Yeah. As soon as the table breaks, it stops pushing back. Okay. Does that make sense? So, so this is a this is a trick. I mean, it's 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 easy when I show it to you this way. When you start thinking about it later, it's kind of it's kind of weird to think that the normal force can change, and it does all the time. If I if I add more weight, the normal force just gets more. It's just the way it is. And if I take off weight, the normal force gets less. So, what's your going on? Going up at a constant speed. Or are you accelerating? Uh -huh. I've never been. I've seen you're accelerating. If you're accelerating, it becomes much more complex. We'll save that for another day. You're, there's no way of going up at a constant speed. Because then speed. you're very dense. If you're if you have acceleration, then your net force is not zero. And so that's we'll save that one for another day. Here's the next piece of information. So here's our two bits of information. First one, free loss. Second one, weight. The side note of mass and weight are not the same thing. Third note, normal force. What is it? Okay, you all know what the normal force is now? Uh, the force that contracts gravity. It's the force that surfaces push back. Important note, normal force is always perpendicular to the surface. What does that mean? Perpendicular. perpendicular. What does perpendicular mean? Straight up and down. At a right angle to the. What's perpendicular to this table? Uh, right angle to it. It's not perpendicular. It's not straight up, is it? No, it's 90 degrees up. Here's my point. The normal force not only changes with how much you push on it, it changes with the angle of the surface. It's always perpendicular to the surface, but if the surface isn't flat, it won't be straight up. And then there'll be other forces acting on it, so it's not going to stay in the same place. Like, if that's lifted up and you have your book there, your book's going to slide because. Gravity's acting no, gravity, gravity always up. goes down. Yeah. But the normal force doesn't always go up. This is why books slide. It doesn't slide till you tip the table. Okay. We'll talk. Well, that's 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 later. I think it's either later this chapter or next chapter. Don't worry about that. But I just want you to conceptually get that's what's going on. Normal force changes with the surface. Wherever the surface goes, the normal force is perpendicular to it. Okay. Last point. <coughs> friction. The force of friction. See, big F is force, little f is friction. What's the underline mean? Vector. Vector. The force of friction is equal to the normal force, which you now know, right? Which has a direction. And mu. Now, mu what kitty cats say in England. Around here, cats say meow, but over there they say meow. Sorry, that's a silly joke. Anyway, it's, this is another Greek letter is mu. This is called <coughs> coefficient friction. It's a coefficient that has no units. No units. It's just a number. 
it is always between 0 and 1. Calculate mu, and you get an answer of 1.5. What do you know? You messed up. It's wrong. Do it again. So mu is like this thing, kind of like a kind of like sine or cos, so like kind of yeah. sine and cosine. It's just a, it's just a, it's a, it's a number between zero and one. It's automatically calculated. What determines mu? The surfaces. This determines how much friction there's going to be. So if you've got um, Teflon on Teflon, mu is going to be really small. If you've got sandpaper on sandpaper, mu is going to be really high. How does weight affect friction? Is that again? How does weight or mass affect friction? It's huge. It's buried right here. If the table's flat, then the normal force would be the same amount as the weight. So the more weight you have, the more friction you're going to have. So I'm thinking about like if you have like a big heavy box, and if you have sandpaper on the bottom and you're trying to move, it's going to be really, really hard. But if you have a piece of paper or something under there, or oil or whatever, it's going to slide across easily. Yep. That's basically because n is multiplied by mu, and if mu is really low, then n is also going to be so, so these are the two factors that make it hard to move. How rough is your surface? What's it made out of? And how heavy is it? Okay. With all that said, we now have 18 minutes to do the lab, to do the experiment. I should save the experiment for next week. Let's do a practice problem so we can see if we can get started in the work. Okay. So we'll do the experiment next week instead. I know the, the book has two experiments for this chapter. We're only going to do one. And uh, we're going to save it for next time. Uh, so why, why don't you cut the video there?